Hey guys, it's M4J here and welcome back to the M4J network here on OpenTTD. This is the first time I've had to say those words in over two months. Um, if you don't know why that is, uh, basically a lot has happened since the last time I recorded an OpenTTD video and I'm not going to go into it right now because I'd rather just not talk about it anymore to be honest and move on from it but uh, at some point in the future I will be writing a blog post about exactly what's happened um, when I can say a little bit more let me just close my door there we go and if you want kind of a basic outline if you go back and watch some of the quarantine streams uh, one of the city skylines ones I'm trying to remember which one it was I think it's part 11 of city skylines might have been part 12 uh, I actually tell the story there as to what's happened some of you might have already worked it out um, the, the more perceptive people actually I mean some of it was bloody obvious anyway but um, yeah I'm not going to dwell on it too much right now I want to record OpenTTD instead so welcome back to the M4J network we're currently at a very 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 clogged up Great Winfield Airport West Terminal right now um, I need to fix the Great Western franchise badly because it's badly broken um, I'll be building a new motor power depot and I'll also be upgrading the rolling stock to some but not all of what has been requested as per the franchise agreement. And speaking of franchise agreements, today's episode is a little bit to do with that as well. So there are four types of franchise that you can have if you're a patron. So if you head over to my Patreon, link is in the description down below, uh, you can support uh, six tiers, six levels that you can support. The cheapest one is a dollar a month most expensive one is $25 a month that will probably change in the future there might be extra tiers added on top but essentially uh, each tier reward revolves around different you know you get different rewards depending on what series you're a fan of and things like that some people might want rewards for every series that's ongoing and that's totally fine some might only want them for the M4J network or Global Ventures or Football Manager whatever it might be that is also totally fine but in OpenTTD, there are four types of franchise you can have. Road, Rail, Air, and Sea. The Rail one is kind of easy to explain um, because it's it's the only franchise that's currently being claimed. The Great Western franchise is actually the, the franchise that has been claimed, so it's a lot easier for me to explain it by using this as an example. So essentially, the route from Guard City St. Peter all the way down to uh, the airport here, also Woolworth Central, Plindham Junction, um, Munfingford Paragon, that's the main Great Western franchise route, so basically the main Great Western route. There are, also, there are also little branches, so the little branch from Rudworth down to Dintown, uh, the branch from Plindham to, is it Tarningworth I think it goes to, uh, the branch from Woolworth, uh, which is completely separate to the rest of the franchise. Uh, in terms of there's no rail connection but it is still part of the franchise and there's also the branches down to Charwood and up to Monningpool Falls that have Great Western services using them. So this is kind of the, the base model of what a rail franchise would look like and it's very much inspired by the real life UK rail network. One of the ones that was a little bit harder to explain was Air and that's what I'm going to be doing today. So if you are a patron and you decide that Air is the uh, the focus of your rewards um, I think I will change it in the future so that you can have maybe two or three of the choices so you, you're not just limited necessarily to rail or air or sea or road but you can actually have a rail franchise and a road franchise at the same time um, that might be a better option because I I didn't underestimate as such but I future proofed it a little too much so right now we've there's like hundreds of franchises that are going to be available and I've only got one patron so it kind of makes sense right now to split it up um, a little bit more well actually combine it in fact and then split it up maybe in the future we'll, we'll have to come up with a way of, of doing that fairly but uh, what do I mean by air franchise then so in real life airlines have hub airports or they have their like base of operation airport so in the case of British Airways uh, their hub airport is Heathrow, and more specifically Heathrow Terminal 5. Now they do have flights that go from some of the other terminals uh, at Heathrow, and they also have flights that go from other airports in the UK. But their main base of operations is Terminal 5 at Heathrow. Uh, EasyJet, their main base of operations is Luton, and I'm trying to think of some other ones. I think KLM, 
uh, which is the Dutch national airline. I think their base of operations is Schiphol. Um, I'm trying to think of ones like Qantas, because they're the national airline of Australia, and I'm not sure where their hub actually is. But, I mean, you've got other obvious ones like Emirates flying out of... Um, um, it is Abu Dhabi, isn't it, Emirates? I think it's Abu Dhabi. And then uh, Qatar Air Airways flying out of Doha and, uh, you know, ones like that. And that's essentially what we're doing here. So, for example, Great Winfield Airport uh, West Terminal is going to be a hub airport. The East Terminal is going to be more for, like, general aviation in real life. But imagine that it's, uh, you know, a lesser tier reward. So if you... These are just hypothetical numbers. By the way, don't take this literal because I've not sorted it out fully yet. But let's say, for example, you only support... Why did the screen jump then? This is me moving the mouse, by the way. I just saw something on my other monitor that jumped. Um, let's say you only support me $5 a month. You can have one of these airports here. So you'll be able to run some limited flights from this airport to, you know, Warnbridge is probably the northern limit, Kindinghatton Parkway is probably the southwestern limit, that kind of thing. Whereas if you have a bigger airport, say $20 a month, you get access to these airports. Uh, and I'm trying to think of the sizing. That's not what I wanted at all. That's what I wanted. So let's... Oops. Wow, you can tell I haven't done this for a while. Um, I have got the latest version of JGR, by the way people ask. Um, I always try and make sure I'm up to date. Let's go hub airport for a second. So intercontinental is this style here. And let's say that if you're a $25 a month patron, you have access to intercontinental. If you're a $20 a month, you have access to international. Uh, and then if you're, uh, let's say 20, no, $15 a month metropolitan, then city, and so on and so forth, and eventually all the way down to like commuter airport. So you might have, say we built another airport up here, you might have this one and you can run short haul flights to other smaller airports around the place. And since I've mentioned other airports, obviously there are lots of hub airports around the map. Bath City has three, Guard City has four, I think, three or four. Um, one Bridge has one, Kindinghatton Airport Parkway is one. Uh, and there are other ones dotted around the map as well. Then you've got some of the smaller airports, like uh, if I just pin you here so I can fast travel back in a second. This is running a lot faster, by the way. I don't know if that's been optimized or whether it's just because I've not played it for a while. Uh, so up here, I think it's Tarning Head. Ah, uh, Tainingbury, that's the one. So this is a slightly smaller airport. And really here, you're only going to be able to run flights between Guard City in here and maybe over to Warnbridge. But obviously for your hub airport, your flights have to go somewhere. So I think the rule will be you can have as many flights as you like leaving from your airport, but you can only have one flight of yours land at another person's airport. So for example, if you want to run between Great Winfield Airport West Terminal and Tainingbury, you can have one flight and one flight alone that does that. So you can have like three planes, let's say, operating that service, but you can only have that one service serve someone else's airport. And it just means you're not clogging up someone else's airport with all of your flights. So uh, to use this as an example, I want to get this one set up because I think we're, we're at the stage now where starting to run flights from these airports is probably a good idea. So I just want to check that we haven't already got aircraft. We have already got aircraft. I'm going to get rid of all the aircraft and start again. Wow, was that £11,000 I got from that? And that's it. Oh, my phone's going off now as well. <clears throat> One second, guys. Just putting in my food order. Right. Um, so, yeah, let's get rid of all of these aircraft. They should all be around. There we are. So what flights you run and the aircraft you use for those flights is entirely at your discretion. I would advise that you bear in mind that we're in the late 1980s, early 1990s time period. So any aircraft that specifically fits that or an earlier period would be preferable, but I'm not too fussed as to which you'd choose. So 
let's say from this hangar here, also you have access to both hangars. You know, it's, it's just this side of the airport is served by this hangar and then this side by that hangar. You know, the whole airport is effectively yours. So let's grab an assortment of aircraft. So let's start with relative long haul flights. So if I go by introduction date, so we've got the newer ones, I believe, at the top here. So if I scroll down some, we're sort of around the 747. Maybe not that 747, because that was in 1995. I think the original 747s were, weren't they built in like the 1960s? Really, really long time ago. Uh, where are we at? 1990. There must be more. There's Concorde. There we go. 747 200 only holds 452 passengers which isn't great what about this one as now some of these as well have a range you see there this one has a range so this might not be able to operate the flight that I want it to actually do because what I want this one to do is to go from uh, Great Winfield Airport all the way to Bar City if I can which is right the way over here now I think actually what it could do is run to Fort Breadborough and then the trains would take people onwards now is it gonna work it is no it's not next destination is out of range so that that is gonna be the limit I might even remove the aircraft that don't have a range just so you have to it even tells you what the upgrade was. That's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, the the idea is you're supposed to, to be limited in what you can and can't do with flights. That's the plan. So is there anywhere... Did I, I've, I'm sure I built an airport somewhere in the middle of the map. Where's Bedtown Valley? Okay. Not sure what's going on there. Um, let me just try and find... So there's Kenville. That's in Guard City. Lenway Riata. Actually, let's go down to Kindinghatton Parkway. See if we can land here. Before I do that, I'm going to rebuild this and make it uh, an international airport and build it pretty close but not exactly on top of the tracks like that now you should hopefully really okay maybe this isn't going to work like I thought it was then maybe I will go with the unranged one you know you carry less do I have anything else that has a range this this is actually giving me good advice on on what to do <clears throat> regarding um, wow you really are limited regarding the placement of airports because there's gonna be a lot more airports placed down uh, over time let's for now grab this one or should I go... I'm, I might try and find a more recent 747. Like this one. Oh, what's that for? Ah, that's for... So I'm recording this on a Thursday. And that's the reminder for today's episode, which is episode 55. For those of you that want to know when this is going... Go, uh, try that sentence again. For those of you that are interested in when this episode is being recorded. This is a cargo plane, yeah. So I mean, these are all your different options, essentially. And um, I like this one. It's got more capacity. It's also cheaper. I find that hard to believe. So you're going to go there. And then... 
Actually, yeah, hang on. Let's go back to Bar City now, because I haven't got the range to worry about. So this is kind of the longest flight that would probably be doable on the map, is Guard City to Bar City and back. And then back to the hangar. So you're going to be unload. No loading. If I scooch back over here. Timetable wise. Um, turn off auto separation. I'm going to do an hour. Uh, that's the start date. That's why. Got to turn that off. I'm going to do an hour stop for each of these. There we are. So I think that's going to be about right. Travel time, we don't know what that is yet. Set it to automate. Scheduled dispatch. And effectively, I want there to be a flight every hour. Just trying to think. A flight every hour between the hours of 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. So this one needs to start at 5. Uh, that was correct. This is what I wanted to change. Okay, so five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So you stop at 22 because by the time it waits in the... Uh, one second. I knew I did something wrong. You need to go there. Um, by the time it waits in the uh, hangar for 60 minutes, it will then be 11 p.m. by the time it comes. I actually... You need to go away. You need to be four. Because, yeah, it's an hour wait in the hangar. Then it's an hour wait at the airport. So that's two hours. So by the time it actually takes off here, it'll be 6 a.m. And then by the time it takes off here, it'll be 11 p.m. So you'll be the last scheduled flight out of the airport, essentially. Um, although that also doesn't work. Because then it, it, when it gets to Bar City... This is tricky, because by the time then it gets to Bar City, it's going to be after, let's say the last flight is 8. So it's it's 10 when it takes off from here. It'll take about half an hour, I think, maybe more, maybe less, to get to Bar City. Then it has to wait there for an hour, and then it has to fly back here again. So you want to try and be considerate. Some flights will take off slightly after 11pm, but the, the curfew is around 11pm. So let's say this is all done and set up and ready to go. We don't know how many aircraft we're going to need for this flight yet, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. What I am going to do is stick this one here, and then we're going to look at our next flight. So as well as, you know, you've got Boeings here, but you can also have other... Actually, can I change the... Yes. You can change the livery, if you so wish. It would be nice to have custom liveries for aircraft as well, but I, I still don't really know how to go about that. Let's do something quite short hoppy next, like a 737. Um, what sized 737s have we got? 168. You're a cargo one. 149. What was the one up here? Uh... Or you try and find a specific plane on a list. 737. There's a 777 there. I might use a 777. I'm, I'm toying it up. I prefer Airbuses myself, but... I might go with a... Yeah, I'll go with this one. Why not? Just for now. <coughs> And livery, 
passengers. Okay. Or reverse coloured. Or, oops, that's not what I meant to do at all. Uh, company coloured, I think I'm going to do for now. So all white, blue engines. That's quite nice. Uh, ah, damn it. I was just going to copy and paste then. Alright, we we'll have to do it the old-fashioned way. So you're going to take off from Guard City here, Winfield Airport, and you're going to fly to... Now, I don't think you can get to Kinding Hatton. I think that's beyond your reach. Oh, no, you can. That's cool, then. And before... What did I delete? I'm an idiot. There. Okay. Um, so now you're going to be an hour at all of these. Automate. Schedule dispatch. So this one I'm going to do the times first. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whoops. Uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. These don't have to be hourly. You can pretty much run flights, you know, half hourly, even every 10 minutes if you really want. But I do warn you not to clog up airports because they're a nightmare to fix. Say the last flight leaves at 8 again. Now the start date, I'm actually going to change to 0025. So add 25. Actually, let's not do a nice round number. Let's do 0023. So it just staggers them a little bit. So this, these take off on the hour. These ones will take off 23 minutes past the hour. Just to make my life a little bit easier. So this one is also now technically ready to go. Let's now do a real shorty. Uh, let's go like an Airbus A321. So you were, what, 400 passengers? Yeah. You're going to be a lot smaller. 200 and... Actually, what... what um, No, it wasn't you, was it? It was this one. So you're the Aviator's Aircraft set. And you're just the World Airliner's set. So I might remove the World Airliner's set. Which I think you're also part of as well, aren't you? Uh... What are you? 747-400D. Which is... Somewhere... There. Yeah, you're part of the World Airliner set as well. So I might remove the World Airliner set and just have the planes with range. So if you can't run a flight because it's too far away, then you can't run a flight because it's too far away. That's just them's the brakes unfortunately um, in fact I'm really tempted to do that now but I know it will slow down my game quite a lot removing a, a new GRF let me try and find one that is part of it would be cool if I could sort by new GRF that would make my life a lot easier There's actually quite a few aircraft I think we would lose ok so this is part of the aviators set so you're a Beechcraft, you're from 1984, you can hold 19 passengers. Okay, I want a, a little bit bigger than that. 218 passengers, that sounds good. It's another Boeing. Should really try and avoid Boeings all the time, but there we go. So you're going to run from here. Possibly, if I can do this actually, this might even be too far. Because uh, I'm trying to fly you up to here. It's actually out of range. Look at that. It is actually out of range. I think the furthest this plane can travel is probably Kenville Airport. Which is down here. And even then... It might only just be able to do it. Let's have you go to that one. Also, um, 
all of these I need to do service it would be nice I mean aircraft I suppose I could do this where they don't have to go to the depot all the time or the hangar all the time but yeah it's not the end of the world your unload no loading your unload uh, no loading and you are unload no loading close those right you grab go to that and that change time hour do automate uh, yeah you don't have auto separation when you have that on so duration that's fine start date Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Now technically this is like an interurban shuttle, so I'm going to remove the first three and the last three. Actually no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that, that's dumb. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to remove every other one, so five, seven, nine, 11, 13, 15, 17, and 19. <clears throat> and then as for the start date, 0047, let's say. And that's that one set up. So you, these are the, the basic examples of flights that you can do. And just to end with, let's see if we can do a Concorde flight somewhere. Maybe up to Warnbridge if it's not too far away. Uh, I'm actually going to do this properly this time. You're going to go there, there, there. Unload. No loading. I think Warnbridge should just about... Really? Wow. That I actually find that quite surprising. Is there another version of Concorde that I could use? So your range is a thousand and twenty-four tiles. Yours is even less. That is actually really surprising. Your one thousand two hundred and eighty. So let's um let's remove you for a second. Ah, you would, you, uh, you did work. All right, back up to Warnbridge. Yeah, you're fine. So again, we'll we'll have you run every every hour, just for the sake of it. Uh, and then s set that, and then schedule dispatch. Keep clicking the wrong things. Enable. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. And then for the start date, let's do that, just as an example, again. Right, you're now set up to work as well. And that's that's basically how you're going to set up your, your air franchises.
if you can call it that, your airline essentially is what you'll be uh, in possession of, an airline uh, with your hub airport and yeah, you, you'll be able to, so the, the airports will be owned and managed by M4J Transport but you as the airline will run your own services so you won't use these planes, you'll buy your own uh, and then set them off uh, on your own routes of your choosing. You will have to log where you've got all of your flights going uh, I don't think we'll go as in depth as having individual flight numbers or anything like that. We'll try and maybe generalize it because I I, I want to make this accessible as well as realistic. Cause I know not everyone wants to do things like logging individual things here, there, and everywhere. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to comment down below. This episode is about twice as long as I thought it was going to be, um, but it's kind of the the new era of the M4J network now. Now that M4J is my full-time commitment again. Obviously, Patreon is going to be at the forefront of my mind, which means um, I'll be trying to do a lot more to explain how these franchises work and things like that. So the next episode is probably going to be Road or C. I don't know which of the two yet. Uh, and if you are a patron, the patron-only videos that are coming up in the future. Uh, so when you watch this one, the second patron only video will be scheduled I think the following Tuesday after this this video goes out maybe the one after that I'm debating whether to do it once every fortnight or once a month if you have any ideas for that as well feel free to comment down below that's much appreciated um, but yeah like I said if you've got any questions about how patreon works uh, only I, again this sounds bad but only ask if you are actually considering becoming a patron because I've spent quite a lot of time answering people's questions and then they've gone oh okay and walked off and it's kind of like when you're when you work in a shop and someone's like asking lots of questions about a product and you think, oh yeah, I've got a sale here, and then they just go thanks for the help and wander off, and you you realise they were never planning on actually buying anything. So if you're genuinely interested in being a patron and you have questions about how the patron tier system works, please do comment down below and I will answer them as best I can. Besides that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and of course if you enjoyed the series, drop some comments down below, all that good stuff. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, be sure to hit, uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. You can tell it's been a while since I did this. If you have already subscribed to the channel, thank you guys for your continued support. Uh, feel free to share the video as well with as many people as you know, that's always appreciated too. And until next time, I will see you soon.